Hello, welcome to Reso Coder and also welcome to the first part of this tutorial series in which we are gonna be making an air hockey game in Unity. You will learn about important concepts in Unity development. We will tackle concepts as player movement, user interface, physics and even artificial intelligence. We are gonna be making this game first for PC and then towards the end of the series we're gonna really easily switch to releasing it on Android. I am making this tutorial with absolute beginners in mind, so you can jump right in regardless of your experience. However, although I am going to explain necessary programming concepts, I am not gonna explain them in detail, so if you wanna learn C-sharp programming, check out my Learn C-sharp course for beginners. And now, let's get to it. After you download and install Unity from the link in the description, create a 2D project like this, open Unity and then click on new, name it accordingly and you wanna choose 2D here and then click on create project. Let's make this dual project pleasant to the eyes by adding some game art. You could make the 2D art yourself and there are many ways to do it easily and for free. Thankfully, Air Hockey is not a game which has a lot of art, so just a few sprites will be enough. You can download them from resocoder.com by clicking on the link in the description. I've made this art in an open source vector editor called Inkscape, the link is also in the description. So now let's create a folder called Art and drag all of the images right in there. To create a folder, you just click on Create, Folder, we want to call it art, then open up this folder and go to the download location of the sprites that you've downloaded from my site or you can obviously make your own sprites and then just select them all and drag them into the Unity editor into this art folder. Having game art sitting inside a folder in our project is definitely not exciting, so let's actually put it inside the game scene. Let's make a background first. For that, we are gonna drag the sprite called BG into the scene. And it's huge. We wanna make it a bit smaller, but first let's center it among the axes. Like this, select the position, it's gonna be zero on X, Y and Z is already zero, so now it's centered. We've centered the transform component of this BG game object. To make it smaller, select the sprite BG from the art folder and set its pixels to unit to 210. Now when we click on apply, we will see what happens. Fits almost exactly into this scene. I found that this value works the best for this particular sprite. If you made the art yourself, the best pixels per unit might differ. So that's awesome, the game is certainly starting to look good. Let's add a player to the scene. So again, drag the player sprite to the scene, it doesn't matter whether you choose red or blue, but I'm gonna choose the red one. So drag it in there, and as some of you might have already predicted, the player is also pretty big, and it's also behind the background. To make the player appear on top of the background, we need to set the order in layer property of this sprite renderer to minus some value, for example minus 1 or minus 10. And as you can notice, the player is also pretty big. Let's actually make all of the sprites smaller. The best values for these sprites, for the pixels per units, are 210 for BG border, for the players it's 640, don't forget to click on apply, so 640, apply, now again 640, and the best value for the puck is 768. After we've changed the sprites to be the right size, let's get to programming. In this tutorial, we are gonna create a script for moving the player. In the next part, we are gonna add a puck and also physics to the game. So to keep everything organized, create a folder called scripts at the root directory of assets. So again, create folder scripts. Inside it, we wanna create a C-sharp script named player movement. So create C-sharp script, player movement, and we are gonna open it up. 
I'm using Visual Studio, you might be using Mono Develop or VS Code, it doesn't really matter. As long as you can write code in it, you're all set. So the script is gonna look something like this. And you don't need to worry about these two using statements, so we can delete all of that stuff. We need to create some fields. The first one is gonna be a boolean was just clicked. And it's gonna be used to tell whether the player has just clicked on the screen. So bool was just clicked. Then we want to create a boolean can move and the meaning of the variable is pretty self-explanatory. It tells us if we can move or not. And we are going to be switching on and off these variables from the code that we will write later in this tutorial. And then we want to create a vector too, which actually just keeps two floats together. So X and Y, it's a two dimensional vector. And it's gonna be called player size and this is gonna tell us how big the player is or rather how big the sprite of the player is now in this start method which runs only once we want to get the extents of the player which is the distance from the center to the edge and you can see what that means on the screen right now so player size equals game object which is the game object that this script sits on and this script is going to be sitting on this player red game object so by calling game object we mean this player red game object dot get component and we want to get the component sprite renderer we want to get the bounds of the sprite renderer and we want to get the extents and again, you can see on the screen what all of this actually means. Then inside this update method, which as it's written here, this update method is called once per frame. That means it's called many, many times. We want to check if the left mouse button is pressed by writing an if statement, if input dot get mouse button. And we want to get the mouse button zero, which means the left mouse button. And if this is true, which means the left mouse button is pressed, the code inside this if statement is going to run. Now first up, we want to get the mouse position. And although we could do this pretty simply by just calling input dot mouse position, this is not the mouse position that we need, because this is just in screen coordinates. However, when we want to operate on something inside our game, we need to get it inside the world coordinate system, which is this, this x equals 0.49, this is in world coordinates. And in order to move the player, we need to operate in world coordinates and not in screen coordinates. Because screen coordinates are dependent on the resolution. So if I just click here and I have full HD screen, and if I click on the same point, on the screen but I have a 4k screen the screen coordinates are going to differ however the world coordinates are the same for this place that's why we need to convert the screen coordinates to world coordinates to do this we are gonna create a vector 2 which stores x and y so vector 2 mouse position or mouse pause for short and it's gonna be equal to camera dot main dot screen to world point and we want to convert input dot mouse position now we want to check if the player has just clicked on the screen so if was just clicked which is the boolean that we have written right here and also we need to set this boolean to be true from the start and basically what do we want to do here we want to drag the player only when the click happens on top of the player we don't want the player to be able to just jump wherever we click. So if we click here, the player is not going to move. We need to click on top of it and then drag it in order for it to move. And if it was just clicked is true, we want to set it to false because otherwise it would constantly execute this if statement because update is called once per frame. So it's called many, many times per our game. And if we did not set the was just click to false like this, this if statement would keep on executing. And was just clicked is set to true from the beginning because when we first start the game, 
the first click, wherever it is located, is surely going to be the first click, right? And if was just clicked is true, after we set the field to false, we want to check if the mouse position at the time of the click is in the same position as the player. And this is going to be a really, really long if statement. I want to remind you that if you just do not want to write this long if statement yourself, I fully understand you and you can get the code from this tutorial from resocoder.com by clicking on the link in the video description. So if mouse position dot x coordinate of the vector two is greater or equal than transform dot position dot x and by transform we mean these coordinates inside here so when I change x it moves you see so we are checking for these these coordinates here and also if mouse position dot x is less then transform dot position dot x plus player size dot x and this long line of code checks if we are here inside this half of the player on the x axis and then we want to check for the other half of the x axis and also for the y axis for the upper half and also for the lower half of the y axis and this tutorial would get really really boring if we would just write that out so i'm gonna cut it i'm gonna be back in just a while and you can obviously get the code from the link in the video description and then kind of wonder what all of that does and if all of this is true if this if statement is true which means that the situation that you can see right now on the screen actually happened we want to set the can move boolean to true because we can move because we have clicked on the player and if we've clicked on the player only then we want the player to be able to move because we do not want it to jump on the screen like if we clicked here we don't want it to jump on this click location right it would look stupid so can move equals true and else if the click was somewhere else on the screen we want to set the can move boolean to false because we cannot move and now outside of this was just clicked if statement we want to write if can move we want to move the player by again accessing the transform of the player which we have already explained what that means and we want to set the position and we want to set it to the mouse position which is the position of the mouse converted to world point coordinates and if was just clicked is not true so else we want to set was just clicked to true because if the player is not clicking the next click will certainly be the first click we are doing all of this was just click nonsense here because we only want to check if the mouse position is inside the player like this inside here only when the click actually hits like this so when we click at the time of the click we want to check if the mouse position is inside but then after the click has happened so we are just holding the mouse button down we are no longer clicking actively we are just holding it down we don't want to check if this if statement is true because we want to be able to drag the player only when we actually click on the player let's demonstrate it so we can get it better so let's press on play and it's not gonna do anything because you also need to drag the script on top of the player which is pretty simple just drag the player movement script on top of the player rat and as you can see it's added here and let's test it and as you can see it all works we are moving the player however if we click somewhere else not on the player we are not moving it and when we still hold the mouse button down and we go over the player it's not gonna start moving because we are checking for this if statement only at the time of the click if we click on the player this if statement executes it realizes that we actually did click right on top of the player 
and now we can move it. When we let go of the player, click somewhere else, it's not gonna jump anywhere, and it's pretty nice in my opinion, it's really awesome. So that's it for the first part of this series. In the next part, we are gonna add a puck and also physics, so stay tuned for that because it's gonna be pretty awesome. I hope that you've learned something new from this tutorial. If you did, give this video a like and also share it. If you have any suggestions, questions or you just wanna say hi, please leave a comment. Subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button to get notified about my new videos. Follow me on social media, keep learning, keep creating and see you in the next video.